सो गुड मॉर्निंग आई एम डॉक्टर अपूर्व गर्ग आई एम कंसल्टेंट हेड ने कॉन्को सर्जन एट विशेष जुपिटर हॉस्पिटल इंदौर एंड टूडे आई विल बी स्पीकिंग ऑन हेमी वर्सेज टोटल आई नाउ शेयर माई स्क्रीन सुबह को ड्रेसिंग किया है किया है ना So, hemi versus total total thyroidectomy for differentiated th thyroid cancers indications and dilemma. Uh, I'm sorry, Apur. There was some issue with my this uh, microphone. Uh, I uh, was trying to do that. So, we welcome you, Apur. Uh, please. Uh, so, I will welcome Apur uh, 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 properly. So, Dr. Apur is our ex fellow from TMH, a very close friend. And uh, uh, Dr. Apur is currently a senior consultant in uh, uh, Department of Surgical Oncology at Visesh Jupiter Hospital, Indore. Uh, so, Dr. Apur will be speaking on hemi versus total thyroidectomy. So, please go ahead, Dr. Uh, Apur. Thank you. Thank you very much, ma'am, for this wonderful opportunity. and good morning to everyone so hemi versus total thyroidectomy for differentiated thyroid cancers indications and dilemmas so as you can see this is a beautiful painting by leonardo da vinci depicting madonna and here you can see she has a goiter okay so this is a endless debate we have seen and heard this in almost every big head neck conference so let us begin the endless debate so why are we discussing it hemi thyroidectomy is indicated in tumors that are less than 1 cm which are intrathyroidal unifocal we don't which don't have any nodal or distant metastasis low risk patient and which have classical variants and total thyroidectomy is indicated in patients who have more than 4 cm tumor extrathyroidal extension nodal metastasis distant metastasis and aggressive variants so and high patients with have high risk profile like uh, exposure to radiation etc but the area between 1 and 4 cm is the gray area and we do not have any documented uh, and patients who have no documented nodal metastasis or who don't have any gross extra thyroid extension so you all must have read our head neck uh, guidelines from tmc i have taken this slide verbatim from there so hemi thyroidectomy what are the advantages that you have lesser complications dtc is an indolent disease with very low recurrence or mortality but what are the benefits of total thyroidectomy there is chance of 5 to 10% recurrence in contralateral lobe if we do hemi thyroidectomy there is increased rate of local or regional recurrence that is 14 versus 19% for hemi thyroidectomy and 2 versus 6% for total thyroidectomy so we see total has lesser local and regional recurrences and there is 10% chance of distant metastasis if we do conservative surgery total thyroidectomy allows us to give admit a radioactive iodine there is risk for dedifferentiation if we have hemi thyroidectomy and we can do follow up with thyroglobulin if the patient undergoes total thyroidectomy but the debate is do both of these surgeries have equivocal survival outcome so we will see as we proceed so there have been multiple studies who have uh, which have favored hemi thyroidectomy or total thyroidectomy and these have been from respectable centers around the world the notable for amongst them for total thyroidectomy are one by shaha et al from msk cc group uh, which had 1038 patients and for hemi thyroidectomy we have this study from saman et al which had 1599 patients and one from lundgren et al from karolinska sweden which had 5123 patients 
so this is a typical scenario that we all face a young female who has a nodule between 1 and 4 cm and how do we proceed with her so uh, there was a publication by mazafari et al and they they showed that surgery more than lobectomy had hazard ratio of 0.7 cm and the p was significant then for distant metastasis recurrence surgery more than lobectomy had a p not significant then for cancer mortality surgery more than lobectomy had p significant so there was difference in uh, mortality amongst the two groups sorry so when we see unilateral versus total thyroidectomy in patients who have been uh, characterized with ames low risk papillary thyroid carcinoma if we see bilateral lobal resection has less chance of local recurrence regional recurrence and loco regional recurrence then total thyroidectomy versus lobectomy in unilateral papillary thyroid carcinoma metastasis at all showed that recurrence rate was 4.4% in total thyroidectomy group versus 8.3% in uh, lobectomy group here the p was significant mortality rate was 0.3% versus 1.1% in total thyroidectomy versus lobectomy group then another study by choi et al on oncologic outcomes in patients with 1 cm to 4 cm differentiated thyroid carcinoma according to extent of thyroidectomy showed that the recurrence rate was nine, uh, in 9.4% in lobectomy group and the distant metastasis rate was practically zero in them then local re, local regional recurrence site was contralateral lobe if the patient underwent lobectomy so this point needs to be noted uh sorry dr purva uh, i would request everyone to please mute themselves uh and it please make me co-host sorry for interruption uh, dr pur no problem no problem okay so can i continue yes dr pur sorry for the interruption no problem no. so if we see the data from national cancer database usa from 1985 to 1998 the total thyroidectomy has better survival as compared to lobectomy the 10 year survival was 98.4% versus 97.1% in lobectomy group and the p here was significant then if we see the 10 years recurrence rate that is 7.7% versus 9.8% when we compared thyroid lobectomy versus total thyroidectomy then what do the ata guidelines said in the 2009 guidelines they said that for patients with thyroid cancer more than 1 cm the initial surgical procedure should be a near total or total thyroidectomy unless there are contraindications to this surgery these guidelines were subsequently changed in 2015 so what happened in between there were uh, database from uh, ncdb which showed that extent of surgery for papillary thyroid cancer is not associated with survival this was a very big study of 61775 patients by adam et al it showed that overall survival was inversely related to tumor size at 5 years 97.6% versus 96.4% when we compare lobectomy to total thyroidectomy and subsequently it was 88% versus 84% at the end of 14 years so if we see here the tumor size 1 to 2 cm had higher survival as compared to size 2.1 to 4 cm then subsequently came the ata 2015 guidelines which are the latest one so for patients with thyroid cancer more than 1 cm and up to 4 cm without extra thyroid extension 
and without clinical evidence of any lymph node metastasis the initial surgical procedure can either be a bilateral procedure near total thyroid or total thyroidectomy or a unilateral procedure lobectomy thyroid lobectomy alone may be sufficient initial treatment for low risk papillary and follicular carcinomas however the decision has to be taken by the team and if they feel that the patient needs rai therapy then patient may need total thyroidectomy so this is different from the previous ata guideline so nowadays what we follow is patient selection and not the type of operation but what are the limitations the recurrence data is limited we patient may require completeness completion uh, of uh, com we require completion so now evaluation before taking uh, next is of contralateral tumors variant of it had patients and contralateral almost and you can see that percents were above frequency of requiring total differentiate to so this study in 1000 consecutive 287 were spectrum so only point the cell variant in what seen in tomi which did in 287 43% with n number then prevalence of adverse pathological features in 1 to 4 cm low risk differentiated thyroid carcinomas there were 59.1% patients undergoing thyroidectomy with tumors measuring 1 to 4 cm and no preoperatively known adverse features who were eligible for lobectomy under the current ada guideline so a completion thyroidectomy after pathological analysis was required so completion thyroidectomy is an unavoidable evil which we have to do sometimes when we find adverse features and what is completion thyroidectomy that after we know the histopathology of the hemithyroidectomy we uh, if we had known these features beforehand we would have done total thyroidectomy so oncological outcomes after completion thyroidectomy for patients will with well differentiated thyroid carcinoma unbag br at all in annals of surgery showed that 32% completion thyroidectomy uh, 56% had low risk and 44% had intermediate risk contralateral tumors were found in 35% of the patients and out of them 40% were micropapillary multifocal carcinomas 15 patients were given an option of surveillance but ultimately decided to have surgery and if we compare it to lobectomy compared to total thyroidectomy for low risk papillary thyroid cancer by vargas et al they found that the proportion of patients meeting the 2015 ata guidelines selection criteria for total lobectomy who subsequently would need completion thyroidectomy varied by study but average around 34% so application of the new american thyroid association guidelines leads to leads to a sub substantial rate of completion total thyroidectomy to enable adjuvant radioactive iodine this study involved 394 patients which showed that adjuvant radioactive iodine would have been favored in 25.6% of the patients and completion total thyroidectomy to enable adjuvant radioactive iodine would have been recommended in almost 20% of the patients pre preoperatively eligible for lobectomy next study is reconsideration of tumor size threshold for total thyroidectomy in differentiated thyroid cancer this study had 771 patients and around 20% were definitely indicated for total thyroidectomy the need for completion thyroidectomy was identified in almost 44% of the patients who were initially eligible for lobectomy then correct extent of surgery is poorly predicted uh, preoperatively by the guidelines of ata 
Association for Low and Intermediate Risk Thyroid Cancer. This study by Dheer et al. showed that intermediate risk features on histology were identified post-operatively in almost 50 in almost half of the patients with positive and 15% with suspicious or malignancy FNAC features. So is less really more? One should know when less really means more. So there is a matter of controversy uh, favor, uh, favor, uh, of controversy in RAI favorable and differentiated thyroid carcinoma. So the National Cancer Database shows that there is better overall survival with radioactive iodine. The two studies have shown that there is better overall survival with RAI. The SCIA database shows that there is comparable overall survival and the newer NCDB studies also show that there is better overall survival with RAI. Then controversies, consensus and collaboration in the use of Iodine-131 therapy in differentiated thyroid cancer. This was a joint statement by ATN, European Association of Nuclear Medicine. It showed that there is no adequate data to refute the role of RAI even in low-risk patients. And the issue may not be effectiveness or ineffectiveness of Iodine-131 in treating residual disease, but rather to identify and treat number of low-risk patients who truly have residual disease. So this also studies to, uh, this also favors total thyroidectomy. Then, what do the newer ATA guidelines say about uh, follow up of total thyroidectomy? So, they say that serum thyroglobulin should be measured every 6 to 12 months by an immunometric assay. And they also recommend that periodic serum thyroglobulin measurement and nuclear. Uh, sorry, an ultrasonography should be considered during follow-up of patients with DTC who have undergone less than total thyroidectomy. So this is also required uh, in patients who undergo hemithyroidectomy. Next study is total thyroidectomy volume and transplant and permanent complications. So in 10,000 total thyroidectomy patients, Hypothyroidism, uh, hypoparathyroidism was temporary in 6% and permanent in 1.6%. And vocal cord palsy was transient in 4.2%, but permanent in 1.7%. So there is statistically significant decline in complication rate across the board if surgeon volume is high. Then complications in reoperative thyroid cancer surgeries. 152 cases, it showed that higher rate of transient hypoparathyroidism is seen in 56.6% versus 25.9%, and there is higher rate of recurrent laryngeal nerve injury in 4.6% versus 1.4. T was significant. So this thing is good for DVD, but not so good for practice. There are a lot of people who are, uh, I will show you, there is a survey coming up. So there is adherence to uh, ATA 2, uh, 2015 guidelines in management of unifocal non-invasive papillothyroid carcinoma clinical survey showed that 58% surgeons would recommend total thyroidectomy, 42.4% would recommend completion and 26.8% would recommend RAI therapy. So this is the survey. Here we can see that as uh, the we move from Bethesda lower category to higher category, number of surgeons recommending total thyroidectomy increases. Then papillary thyroid cancer terminology on anxiety levels, a uh, randomized crossover trial. Here, we uh, it was found that balanced information and counseling on risk mm -hmm. to the patients, number of them, the tendency to choose total thyroidectomy was three times more as compared to hemithyroidectomy. Then another study highlighting the pathological factors. Extrathyroidal extension is associated with compromised survival in patients. Here we see that with ETE, the survival is less. The, you can see the hazard ratio of extensive ETE is 1.74. p value is significant. Then at 30 years, death from papillary thyroid carcinoma had occurred in 2.6% of the patients undergoing unilateral 
global resection versus 2.4% after total thyroidectomy and the distant spread was diagnosed in 3.2% after unilateral thyroidectomy versus total uh, total thyroidectomy then the incidence of pulmonary metastasis so in total thyroidectomy the rate was 1.3% and in complete thyroidectomy alone it was higher 11% So here we can see that the recurrence rate, ten-year recurrence rate, increased with increasing tumor size, and T was highly significant. So as the tumor size increased to more than eight centimeters, the recurrence rate was as high as twenty-five percent. Then why the European Association of Nuclear Medicine has declined to endorse the 2015 American Thyroid Association Management Guideline? for adult patients with thyroid nodules so there were two well regarded trials in uk comparing 131 ablation and no ablation in patients with low risk thyroid which are currently recruiting so it is known that even treatment with low iodine 131 activities may lead to a worse prognosis in patients with low risk dtc than treatment with high activities so it is possible that no iodine 131 treatment may lead to even worse outcomes and verfran uh, verberg et al showed that in differentiated thyroid cancer is worse after low activity initial post surgical iodine therapy in both high risk and low risk patients so now we have a new study with a uh, ca database it showed that in 22724 patients with ptc there was significantly worse disease specific survival and overall survival if we have increased tumor size then uh, less is more comparison between the 2015 and 2009 american thyroid association guidelines for thyroid nodules there was a major shift towards lobectomy alone in low risk dtc of tumor size 1 to 4 cm and it reinstated the concept of the risk stratification based on histopathological report and response to reductive iodine but here comes the googly so the correct uh, there was article in surgery by the american association of endocrine surgeons which said that when patients are considered for lobectomy under the 2015 american thyroid association guidelines 60% of them with positive and 30% of them with suspicious or malignancy cytology would need completion thyroidectomy based on intermediate risk disease so this again <coughs> sets the cat among the dogs so the significance uh, another study which showed that the significance of unrecognized histological high risk features on response to therapy in papillary thyroid carcinoma from 1 to 4 cm the implication of completion thyroidectomy following lobectomy it showed that 40 42.8% out of the 75 750 patients in the 1 to 4 cm group harbored at least a single pathological risk factor that would warrant completion thyroidectomy and radioactive iodine therapy after lobectomy so here we can see that the completion the estimate of completion thyroidectomy varies from 59% in bethesda 6 to 32% in bethesda 5 and it is quite high 42 uh, one study showed it 42.48% 59.1% so as i have showed you that adverse histological features of differentiated thyroid cancer are commonly found uh, previously we have shown that uh, adverse thyroid uh, pathological features are associated with worse outcome so this study showed meta analysis of accidentally detected differentiated thyroid carcinoma in autopsy so they what they found was that full incidence rate of adverse high risk factors on hpr would have warranted total thyroidectomy in these cases so there is a debate within a debate lobectomy apparently equivalent to total thyroidectomy in terms of overall survival versus and disease free survival but there is a caveat significant proportion of patients with lobectomy 
will warrant a completion given the present risk stratification as per the ata 2015 guideline so prognostic and we don't know the prognostic value of soft factors like minimal extra thyroidal extension occult nodal metastasis and limited lymphovascular invasion so there was a study by ito et al which showed that active surveillance was very much sufficient and only 4.6% of the patient experienced enlargement of the primary tumors by 3 mm and 3.5% were advised to undergo surgery for progression of clinical disease which was defined as tumor size that increased to more than 1.2 cm and surgery was recommended for 1.5% of patients due to new nodal metastasis just 0.3% in central compartment and 1.2% in the lateral compartment over a mean follow up period of 60 months and no patient demonstrated any distant metastasis or experienced thyroid cancer related death and then again uh, comparison of 2015 and 2009 guideline it showed that usg based evaluation of thyroid nodules high risk features guide the decision to perform fnac then it also highlighted broader role for hemithyroidectomy and showed that ria is not indicated in low risk group if given in as 30 mg and concept of dynamic risk stratification was introduced and now we have also the evidence of use of tkis so to conclude the extent of surgery should be tailored according to the patient and for the definitive answer we will need a well designed uh, randomized controlled trial but such a study will be a very humongous task because it will involve very high number of patients and it is a distant dream for all of us so i feel that in mean time we should tailor our treatment according to the patient and do this stratification beforehand so that we may decide the correct extent for surgery and for indian scenario and western scenario it is very different because the cost factor in our country is very less as compared to western countries because for them even taking thyroid supplementation for whole life is very expensive but in our country it is the cost involved is very less thank you very much so uh, thank you so much dr pur uh, for a wonderful lecture uh, i think if there are any questions we'll be taking them first i think there is one quick question in the chat box should papillary thyroid carcinoma less than 1 cm be operated or observed is there an uh, is any evidence for the same yeah so uh, as you can see in the last few slide i showed that there was a study by ito et al uh, which showed that very few of the patients required uh, surgery even after follow up of 5 years so here what we can do is whenever i get a patient like that i always discuss it with the patient i tell them that you can uh, there go observation serial with serial sonographies or we can do hemithyroid minimum surgeries hemithyroidectomy if the patient is very apprehensive or anxious correct so i think i will just add one more point like like dr apurva said uh, mainly in institutions like tata or other government hospitals usually the kind of patients we, we receive usually are from low socio economic status and many a times it will be difficult to tell them or discuss them sometimes about the surveillance part so uh, even uh, so sometimes uh, this would be a, a one idea to like like dr apur said to discuss with the patient and go ahead with the hemithyroidectomy or if the patient understands and is ready to come for regular follow up then only can be kept under surveillance here we have to understand that few of these patients very less up to only less than 1% have chances of really uh, loco region uh, it means progression fast progression in fact very very rare distant mets and there is one psychological stress which will be with the patient that he or she is harboring the disease so including these all points we have to counsel the patient accordingly and take a call regarding the surveillance 
correct dr apur so i think uh, i uh, dr apur in our regular practice this is already you have touched upon that point that when we operate the cases like we are planning a hemithyroidectomy and we did the central compartment inspection there are few notes we send it for frozen and they come as Uh, sometimes we realize that they are positive notes so uh, central compartment notes suppose one note comes positive so in your routine practice how do you uh, address that then you do a total thyroidectomy for the same or how do you go ahead uh, madam whenever i get a frozen positive central compartment note uh, i prefer to do total thyroidectomy v and also at least unilateral neck dissection a uh, lateral neck dissection okay so i think uh, here uh, dr apurva is pointing a very important thing is that whenever a central compartment note you get a positive note even though the uh, ata guidelines says that up to 5 notes with micrometastasis uh, less that is less than 2 mm of uh, this focus of uh, this uh, uh, metastasis up to 5 can be considered as low risk but uh, usually uh, we see that in our routine practice also at tmh or our uh, this we end up doing a at least a central compartment dissection uh, for lateral compartment dissection uh, i think dr apur there is controversy that should we do yes. for central compartment positive notes the lateral compartment uh, there is some the data to suggest that yes lateral compartment uh, should be done prophylactically uh, in positive notes but there is some data against it also i think but a lateral compartment clearance a total thyroidectomy is a must in such cases correct what about uh, when you get a multi uh, this centric tumor uh, or i would say multi nodular tumor where one lobe is involved but the other lobes uh, you don't have a positive fnac so do you go ahead and do total dr apur or do you address no, this uh, i stick to because generally we know this before hand that uh, the other lobe is uh, normal and if the size of the largest nodule is less than 4 cm then i think that uh, we can go ahead with hemithyroidectomy if the patient does not have any other high risk factors like lymph nodes or uh, age more than 55 correct so i uh, i agree with dr apur like dr apur said that we have very sensitive investigation in form of ultrasound Say is not nodules. They are only benign nodules. We can go ahead and do a hemithyroidectomy on the involved side, and the other side can be kept intact. Correct. I think Dr. Apu, there is one more question on the chat box. If you could take that. Guidelines for post-op RT in differentiated thyroid cancer. Uh, yes. So if we have a uh, Large tumor with gross extra thyroidal extension, multiple nodes positive in lateral compartment and central compartment with extra thyroidal extension. Then I think that RT should be given. And here also I always discuss with uh, in uh, these cases in tumor boards involving our radiation oncologists because I feel that they are the uh, people to take the final call. And I think we have. studies and trials going on on the use of thyroid uh, radiation radiation but i have so many multiple adverse factors then radiation should be given along with radioactive iodine correct dr apur i think there are a lot of uh, data which is conflicting data uh, for or against rt in uh, differentiated thyroid cancers and i think there is one trial uh, running at uh, almost complete by dr gauri pantavedya uh, yes. madam at uh, tmh i think in some time we'll have the answer that uh, which group of patients in differentiated thyroid cancers really need rt because that is the only randomized trial i know of uh, i think there is one more question if you could take, take that Uh, is there any number of? I think more than five. Generally, we get this figure five in the guideline. Uh, what is your opinion, ma'am? So I think uh, if you go by the ATA guidelines, uh, uh, if you go by the ATA guidelines, they have basically as per the note uh, 
node number as well as the uh, the size of the node and the micro the uh, the micrometastasis they have included everything so in the low risk category they include up to five nodes and the but they should have micrometastasis in the intermediate risk they include the nodes which are usually 0.2 to 3 cm in size they can be more than 5 cm but all the nodes which are more than 3 cm they consider as high risk high tumors risk, yeah. so as the number and the volume of the nodes increases along with the focus of the metastasis they will be considered as high risk if that answers the question uh, let me know so what i follow is that after every thyroidectomy i always do the risk stratification on the ata calculator that is given on the ata website and i feel that it is very helpful in discussing it with the patient and also deciding about the subsequent treatment if it is required or not correct so i think that is the dynamic risk uh, stratification so yes. one you can do like no that's not basically that is after you remove the primary yes. and you have all the histopathological parameters and uh, in fact in the follow up also we can do the dynamic risk stratification correct dr apu so if there are, are any other questions please go ahead with them both are in rtr and bias so uh, generally what i have seen uh, during my training at tata that we used to give radio, uh, radiation first and then followed by radioactive iod so ma'am is the practice same or it has changed uh, i think again there is uh, not uh, very clear guidelines or this data regarding what should be done first because i uh, as we know once we give radiotherapy the field gets all fibrosed Uh, and everything, but like you rightly said, I I agree with you because usually for radiotherapy we say a window period is important. Unlike yes. radio iodine, where also it is important, but usually you need to give them a four week period of uh, like um, high TSH value you have to give. So I think if we are going to delay that much, the RT window period will go. But I think uh, because being surgeons, though we are not the best just to tell you this answer. but uh, i think again the very few patients are going to need both radiotherapy and radio iodine in uh, at least uh, routine practice at tmh also still for radio i radio radiotherapy usually we end up giving to uh, the patients which have, were inoperable on table or which can't be managed with surgical treatment usually still we consider for those patients not as routine we consider for patients who have r0 clearance r plus clearance most likely we give so i am uh, so i really don't know what is the right answer for that and we again uh, like dr apur said we have to discuss in the multidisciplinary team that what will be more effective in which patient i feel that almost every patient that we see should be discussed in tumor board because that is now the standard international uh, method that is followed so that we involve multiple specialists and the patient get can get the best care tailored according to their clinical scenario correct so if there are no more questions uh, we will conclude today's class i thank dr apur once again for a very comprehensive and detailed lecture on the topic thank you so much dr apur thank you very much ma'am thank you